So the game I'm playing today is called Nitronic Rush. Nitronic Rush is a, quote, experimental survival driving game, unquote, created by a group of university students at the DigiPen Institute of Technology and released as freeware in 2011. The game doesn't have that much of a premise as it was meant to be more of a tech demo than anything else, but basically the game takes place in a fictional city known as Nitronic City, a thriving cyberpunk metropolis that looks like something taken directly out of Tron, and the city is being attacked by some evil force of unknown origin. It's not explained what exactly this evil force is, but it's trying to overtake the city and destroy it, and you, the unnamed protagonist that you never get to see because there are no human characters in this game, just cars, have to put an end to this violent threat using your trusty neon-plated nitro-powered interceptor vehicle. Now, Nitronic Rush is a game I have wanted to cover on my channel for many years on end. I remember coming across this game shortly after its official launch. I think it was only about a few months after it. I remember seeing a lot of videos of this game on YouTube when it was still relatively new, but the only reason I'm choosing to cover the game now is because at the time I was still using my old crappy laptop to make videos, and I've mentioned before that the old laptop that I used, or the laptop that I started making videos with back in the early days of my channel, was not designed to play video games. In fact, the initial purpose of my old laptop was not even to play games, because that's not originally what I got it for, and I just figured that considering Nitronic Rush's graphics looked pretty gorgeous, at least at the time, I just figured that it would not run very well on my crappy laptop, so I just decided against downloading the game and just stuck to watching YouTube videos of it. But after I got my current laptop, the one that I use for making videos today, I decided to finally download the game and play it, which was a couple years ago, and then I decided that I wanted to finally try and make a video of it. Unfortunately, because I was still using Hypercam 2 at the time, every attempt I made to record Nitronic Rush ended up with the audio desyncing, and not minor desyncing either, which I could easily fix using Sony Vegas. It desynced so much that there was there was no saving the audio at all. So I didn't bother trying again after that, but now that I am using OBS, I don't have to worry about that at all, because so far I haven't had an instance where I attempted to record footage with OBS and the audio just got completely obliterated. So I I'm finally going to be covering a game that I had actually wanted to play about six years ago, but you know what they say, better late than never. I mean, to be fair, my channel is not necessarily based around covering the latest and greatest indie titles or AAA titles. I mean, that that's never been the point of my channel. I play literally anything, and it really doesn't matter how old it is. I mean, I played an Atari 2600 game, for Christ's sake. So if you think I only review new games on my channel, well, you're missing the point of my channel entirely. Also, the developers of Nitronic Rush released a spiritual successor to the game a few years ago called Distance, and I was initially planning on covering that instead, but I figured it would only make sense if I were to play Nitronic Rush first, just to give you guys an idea as to where the journey for the people who made this game began, or I guess show you where the idea for Distance originated. So that's also another reason, but it's also because I think this game is really cool and I've wanted to play it for a long time. If you want to know what exactly this game is, it's basically Trackmania meets Tron. Take the gameplay from Trackmania, apply Tron-like visuals to it, and you you have Nitronic Rush pretty much. The game is a lot more than just that for the record, but that's that's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, get distance greenlit, but the game has already been greenlit. Nitronic Rush has not been updated in about five years, whereas Distance is still being updated even today. It's also worth mentioning that Distance still hasn't been officially released yet. It was initially launched into Steam Early Access, but it's been in Early Access for a little over three years now, and I have no idea when exactly they're planning on releasing the full game. But anyway, that's not important right now. I'll talk about all of that when I finally get around to playing Distance, but for now, we're gonna check out Nitronic Rush here. We are going to go to the story mode. There is also an arcade mode that we will check out later. The story is fairly short. As a matter of fact, it's extremely short. There's only about six levels, not counting the tutorial, and each one of them only takes about maybe two minutes to complete at most, so I'll definitely be able to show off all the story within this video, and then after that we'll try doing some arcade levels, probably. Alright, well let's get started then. We're gonna go to the story. Yes, we are gonna play the tutorial just so I can show off the controls, even though I personally think I can do a better job than the tutorial, but yeah, so we have a uh, hold up arrow for gas, so, you know, basic driving stuff. A checkpoint, press T to reset to the checkpoint, so that's just a way of uh, killing yourself automatically. You can also die by flying off the roads, of course. 
use left and right arrows for turning, pretty basic stuff. So yeah, when you die, you'll restart at the checkpoint, you can hold shift to boost. You do have a heat meter, and uh, yeah, boosting for too long will blow, will blow you up, keep an eye on your heat meter. So uh, when it fills up completely, that's when you want to uh, stop using the turbo, otherwise you will explode. Use A and D for tight turning, best use when boosting. It is worth mentioning that you can't accelerate when you're using tight turning though. We can boost into and over jumps, which I almost ended up missing that. Adjust your air, uh, adjust your car in the air, I should say, by using the uh, arrow keys, and you can pull off some uh, absurd nonsense like that. Press spacebar to hop, so it just allows you to jump, basically. Yeah, if, if there is one thing that this reminds me of, or at least uh, where stunting is concerned, wow, okay, there, there you go, guys, I, I just absolutely failed the tutorial, that's that's amazing. Yeah, but if there if there is one thing that this game reminds me of in terms of its stunting mechanics, it reminds me a lot of an old Nintendo 64 game I used to play when I was a kid called Hot Wheels Turbo Racing. Like, the stunting mechanics are very similar to the ones that can be found in that game. Like, your, your car is maneuverable by just uh, moving around the analog stick, and it feels really light as a feather. Like, this this mechanic right here. So, it's, it's just really easy to maneuver your car around in the air and tilt your car around in order to perform uh, various stunts and tricks. And also, performing stunts is uh, important for one thing in this game, or it is useful. It causes your uh, heat meter to deplete, or it causes it to uh, reset. So if your car is overheating, you can just perform some sick flips, and uh, yeah, it'll it'll reduce the heat of your car. Oh yeah, also you can do stupid crap like this because uh, this game has very good uh, physics simulation right here. Very good indeed. Only problem is that uh, you do get less points for uh, repeating tricks in rapid succession, so that's a little bit unfortunate. But yeah, if you land it correctly, you can just uh, completely break the game's physics engine in various beautiful ways. And yeah, that's the entire tutorial. So the entire objective is just to get to the end of the level and then your car disintegrates and then it just moves on to the next level. So we're going into uh, Nitronic City here. And this is a short uh, cutscene. A guardian was created to protect and serve the city. It was supposed to be perfect. Yeah, I have no idea if this game is supposed to take place like inside some sort of computer system because it says that the Interceptor, which is the main card that you use in the story mode, is like the ultimate antivirus vehicle. And the fact that they mention antivirus makes me think that this takes place inside some sort of computer, like this is a simulation of some sort. Maybe it is, yeah, see, initializing core antivirus vehicle, so it's like a virus taking over a computer system and we have to go and destroy it. So let's go and do that, so we have Abandoned Utopia. Also, the music in this game is awesome. Just, just so you know, like, like I've had the Nitronic Rush soundtrack on my hard drive for many years on end, like long before I actually decided to play the game, and uh, it's, it's an absolutely an incredible soundtrack. I mean, it's not for everyone because it is mostly comprised of electronic music, but it does have various uh, electronic genres. It has like electro house, some dubstep and drum and bass, even synth wave, surprisingly. Actually, there's even chiptune music in this game. There's also at least one song that is just like full-on metal. So, you, you have various genres here, of course, and uh, each level has its own uh, respective theme, and I believe the the song that, that plays during the level is named after the level itself. So, Abandoned Utopia is a pretty straightforward level. Not that many sections where uh, you have to fly. Yeah, by the way, something I forgot to mention during the tutorial is that uh, you can fly in this game. Yeah, you have a set of wings you can just use to, to fly around. Yeah, so you don't want to hit walls, at least not at high speeds, because that will also cause you to die. Nudging walls does not kill you, it just slows you down. But ramming into a wall head-on at 200 miles per hour will definitely cause you to explode. So you may want to try and avoid doing that, and actually we're already at the end of the level, guys, so that's it. That's Abandoned Utopia. So, pretty simple level right there, I'm not gonna bother entering my name. These are all the other runs that I did off-screen. I have no idea who TRN and, and Clue are, because those were already there when I, uh, when I initially played this. But then we go on to the next level, Deeper Into the Void. I feel like the music just keeps getting more and more amazing as, as the game goes on. This is like a more, a more synthwave-inspired one right here. Yeah, but there's also these hidden roads, like you can take top roads by simply uh, flying up. Uh, one thing that is worth mentioning, though, is that flying also causes your car to overheat, so you don't want to fly too much, otherwise, again, your car will just explode. 
But one thing that is uh, good about the checkpoints is that it also causes your card to cool down. So as you can see, your heat meter resets whenever you pass through a checkpoint. So you can just keep on boosting through them or you can keep on flying through them. Also watch out for these walls because they will appear out of nowhere. The game overall is pretty easy. It's the hardcore levels where it gets extremely challenging, but you can only play the hardcore levels in the arcade mode, and I'll I'll be showing off at least one of those levels within uh, the, the next few moments, like the next 10 or 15 minutes, after I complete the story mode. Also, you may have noticed the, the Reddit logo on top right there. Yeah, these spinning gears, I believe they will kill you instantly if you just simply touch them. So just avoid them at all costs. Just avoid them. Yeah, so you just pass through a checkpoint. So it, it's also kind of like a time trial game as well. This is kind of where the, the whole track media gameplay comes into play. Because it does uh, time you as well. So if you want to try and uh, get a really fast time, try and get through all of the levels as fast as you possibly can. Something that it doesn't tell you right here, or something that it didn't tell you during the tutorial, is that you can simply tap the spacebar in order to receive additional height. It'll teach you that in the uh, second tutorial, like the, the advanced mechanics when you get into the hardcore levels. But I think I'll be able to explain that all to you guys myself. You don't need some, some stupid game tutorial to do that for you. Besides, I played through the entire game off screen already. Yeah, you can also uh, watch a replay of your last performance. Although the replays are a little bit buggy because I noticed that my car tends to glitch through the ground a lot. So maybe it's not, 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 perfect, not a perfect replay system. Which I really do love the visuals here. Just it reminds me so much of, of Tron, a movie that I've that I've never watched, nor have I watched its uh it, its reboot either. But I, I'm familiar with the design of that movie, and yeah, it's just it it just screams 80s. This game really does scream 80s, and so does the music to some extent. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Just got a bit of a tight squeeze right there. Yeah. Just gotta gotta avoid the walls. But overall, the game is just is just really simple. This is this is mostly what it is. So you just gotta avoid some obstacles. Yeah, these are saw blades. Just don't don't crash into them because that'll that'll cause you to die. That'll cause you to die. I could have probably jumped right up there, but it, it really doesn't matter. But I do like that. There's multiple paths you can take through all of the levels. So you know some some additional paths for you to explore. Definitely encourages exploration, so they're kind of non-linear in that regard. But the overall objective remains the same. You just gotta get to the exit. Okay, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna tilt right there. You don't really need to perform tricks at all in this game, but if you want some additional points, you can, of course. Oh boy. Oh boy, just jump up that. Try to get to the to the checkpoint right here. Yeah, this gear's not gonna hurt me because it's not even going going through the road. Yeah, this wall just pops up in the middle right here. And we just gotta pass through the center. But as you can see, these levels are incredibly short. As a matter of fact, guys, we already beat about half the game. So in just uh, in just about uh, four and a half minutes uh, cumulative, because that only took a minute and a half, as did the uh, previous levels. Then we have the Sentinel is watching. This is where the music is gonna start getting a little bit faster paced. And this is, I think, where the where we start getting introduced to gears, like the gears that 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 will will murder you if you touch them, I believe. But just hang on a moment while I try to confirm that theory. Also like these these like uh these these Tron like roads as well. Very nice indeed. I just love it. Like like the digital roads. It's like a big digital landscape filled with lasers and, and saw blades. And that that all want me dead. They all want me dead, but it's it's still pretty easy to avoid them anyway. I just jump over this. I'm gonna try flying up here. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what exactly that helicopter is doing. Actually, I don't think I even took this path before, so I have no idea where this is even leading me. Oh boy, I, I better stop because I'm about to overheat here. Because I don't want to go all the way back to the checkpoint and have to do that again. There we go. But I can do it now. I can still I can be a little bit reckless now because it uh, it completely reset. Now I don't actually remember if the lasers kill you outright. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think what the lasers do is that if you stay underneath them, it'll cause your car to overheat till the point where it explodes. But I don't think it destroys them. I don't think it destroys it immediately. And the Interceptor is not the only type of car in this game as well. Okay, this section is really cool. Yeah, you have all of these, all of these, like, uh, these sharp rocks. These sharp molten rocks that come down at you. They try to block your path, but it's still pretty easy to maneuver through them. As you can very clearly see, because it, it tells you where exactly they're going to land. Like it shows you a, a, a little shadow on the ground, like a little indicator. Those are also mines. Don't fly into those. Gotta fly through these rings, which will uh, reset my heat meter. So yeah, as you can see, I am I am overheating right here. 
But uh, that's the entire level. So there we go. Pretty simple stuff. Very simple stuff indeed. Oh wow, that was actually uh, a much better time. Alright. Very nice indeed. We're gonna keep on going into the belly of the beast. So this is probably like the last difficult level in the entire game. End to a Violent Heart is the final level, but it's actually extremely short. It's, as a matter of fact, it's the shortest level in the entire game. And I think it's also like a straight flying section, if I'm not mistaken. Also, this song. I used to listen to this song, like, so much back when I initially discovered this game, Into the Belly of the Beast. This is, like, my most favorite song out of the entire game. Those chiptune sound effects, too. I just love this freaking music. Yeah, there's also a chiptune remix of, of this song within uh, the game as well. But I don't remember in which level it plays. I think it might be one of the hardcore levels, but I don't remember. I only played about maybe half of the hardcore levels. They're, they're not exactly that hardcore, but it does introduce you to some more complex mechanics like wall riding, which we'll get into later on. The game starts becoming a lot more like Trackmania when you finally get to the hardcore tracks. Just gotta fly through the lasers right here. Just gotta watch out for the walls that are closing in on me too. Oh god. Tight squeeze right there, but it's all good. It's all fine and dandy. Got some mines hovering over us. Oh yeah, this section right here where it's dropping barrels that just kind of bounce all around. That one's just kind of rotating on its side. Oh my god, dude. Holy crap. I don't even know how I managed to get through that. Okay, let's just keep on going. Just jump over that. Oh god, the saw blades. Oh god, the saw blades. Well, there we go. It just, it just completely destroyed me. Completely raised me, you could say. Oh boy. Okay, there. We, we, got, we got through it. Look at that, I'm, I'm using synonyms that I've never used in my videos before. This is also really cool because the road builds itself ahead of you, as you can very clearly see, but that's the entire level. So like I said, they're, they're very short and they're, they're not exactly difficult either. I mean, it's still kind of kind of hard to maneuver through all the, all the sharp rocks, like the sharp spike rocks as I like to call them. But this one is end to a violent heart right here. And this is the only level in the game where flying does not cause your car to overheat because this is just a straight flying level. And this is also the shortest one as well. So this involves just flying through the mines, flying through the lasers, also getting through the, the sharp spiked rocks here, of course. But I don't think there are any checkpoints in this level. So if I die, I'm definitely going back to the start. Also, I have no idea what the hell this section even is. How you're expected to dodge, to dodge this bullcrap. But I, I did somehow, so I guess it didn't really matter in the end. So you just go into the core, and yeah, that's the entire level, guys. And somehow I got an even better time than when I last played it. And uh, that's it. We beat the main story of Nitronic Rush. That is it. That is the entire game. Again, I'm not really surprised that there's uh, not that many levels, because like I said, this was meant to be more like a tech demo. It's just like an experimental little little game that was released for free, so I wasn't expecting that much content out of it anyway. But yeah, it's still still a really cool concept regardless. So you just get to the core and you, uh, you blow it up. Rebooting into Nitronic City, core virus successfully destroyed, city restoring, reinitializing city components, ram disk driver initialized. Okay, so yeah, it is like a simulation then. It's, it's reinitializing the, the program. Program used to simulate Nitronic City. Kind of reminds me of Darwinia in a way. But then you have the credits for Team Nitronic. Oh yeah, this is also... Uh, the, the credits level is also another level where you can just keep on boosting infinitely. And it doesn't cause you to overheat. Yeah, so these are these are just all of the uh, the programmers, the people who made the game. You can just pause the pause the video if if you want to read it, because I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be waiting for any of this. But I'm gonna try and do some some flips in the meantime. Okay, I didn't I didn't do that one very well. Yeah, you also have this announcer guy in the background, and uh, he's he's very cheesy. He's very cheesy. I don't know if he's if he's if he's meant to sound incredibly cheesy, but he does. And uh, as with most announcers in video games, I do feel like he is. Uh, a, a little bit annoying. Come on here, I want to try and get like a, a smooth as butter barrel roll, which I did right there. Very good indeed. How about I get another one? Oh, very nice. Okay. Not like I'm getting any points from that, but uh, yeah, there you go, guys. That's the entire story level, and then it just sends you to Arcade once you're done, so it's, it's convenient. I like that. So I think now we'll try showing off at least a couple of Hardcore levels. Well, d actually, th this one I want to show off in particular, Hardcore Gold, because this is probably my most favorite Hardcore level. Also, you may notice that we have Ghost Replays, so 
Whenever you complete a run in any level, it automatically saves a replay after you enter your initials and submit your score, and then when you play the game in arcade mode, if you choose to have ghost replays enabled, all of the runs that you've performed in the past will be played all at the same time, so you can compete against them. Again, it's very much like Trackmania. Now, I'm gonna go to vehicles, because I am gonna try and, uh, select a new one right here. The only one I haven't unlocked here is the Golden Scepter, because I need to unlock all of the achievements in order to receive this car, which I haven't managed to accomplish yet. Yeah, the DeLorean is in this game, from Back to the Future. I haven't tried using any of these vehicles, by the way, but, uh, you know what? Let's try the Avenger. Let's try the Avenger, a bad Mamba Jamba van with flavor. Yeah, sure, the, the neon van. Let's go and do that then. Yeah, so, uh, I'll use the local ghosts. We're gonna try competing against them. Yeah, so, one of the things that separates the hardcore levels from the regular ones is that, uh, you don't have wings in this game. You have no wings whatsoever. Okay, why the heck did I jump there? Get up. Get up the side of the wall. Yeah, okay, here we go. We're just gonna- we're just gonna defy gravity. Oh god, this thing is kind of slow, actually. So yeah, what- what we're trying to do here is that, uh, we're- we're wall riding, as you can see. And- oh god. Oh, this vehicle is so freaking slow, at least when it's going up walls. Yeah, so we have a lot of, uh, sections right here where we're just saying screw it to gravity. Uh, yeah, it involves a lot of wall riding and a lot of- Oh my god, that has a giant turbo boost right here. Oh god, but I can't even get enough speed in order for it to, to like, stay on the- on the freaking road. Yeah, if you fall off the road, there's like a, a laser grid at the bottom that will kill you instantly once you- once you touch it. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna- I'm gonna need to use my turbo a lot because this thing has, like, so little acceleration. Oh god, get up there, please. Oh no, hang on a second. I- I'm pressing the wrong button for the turbo. Okay, well, I guess I'll just- I'll just go down and kill myself then. Yeah, and then- and then- and then the announcer just starts mocking you for sucking. This is just where he gets incredibly annoying. Yeah, so, in the- in the hardcore levels, there's a lot of sections where you are, uh, where you're wall jumping. Oh my god. There's a lot of sections where you are wall jumping in the hardcore levels. And what that involves is basically- okay, well, I still landed. What that involves is, uh, well, if I can- if I can actually, like, get to it, I'm gonna- I'm gonna show you, right here. Yeah, so, what this involves is that, get up close to the wall, and then press either the A or D keys, which I just completely messed up right there. You know what, screw this, I'm getting the DeLorean, this is- this is a crappy car. No thank you. Give me my freaking DeLorean, please. This- this car is a pile of garbage. Let's go- let's- let's go with something a little bit more faster, or at least something I- that I hope is a lot quicker. Oh yeah, here we are. Oh yeah, here- here's some speed, boys. Here's some speed, boys and girls. I have no idea if this- if this actually performs differently from any of the other vehicles. Also, it has, like, barely any- any lights on it, so it just looks mostly black. Yeah, so we're just racing upside down, we have to, like, actually flip upside down in order for it to stick to the car. God, why am I not able to do this right now? I managed to beat this level before. Yeah, you have to- you have to be going fast enough. That's- that's the thing. I'm gonna see if I can- if I can go fast enough right here. I just gotta tap it. So I can just- I can just fly up like this. I don't wanna, like, like, okay, hang on a second. Here we go. I can still recover from that, even if I do flip over, that doesn't kill me outright. I think I'm gonna, like, back up right here. Achievement unlocked rush hour. Don't know why I got that achievement, but yeah. You- you get cl up close to the wall, and then you press either the A or D key, depending on which direction you're facing, and then you can wall ride. That's how it works. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, this is- this is- this is- this is exactly how physics works. Oh yeah, and, and the checkpoints are spaced far apart from each other in the hardcore levels, so if you if you mess up, you're going back quite a long way is. Here, let's see if I can actually try try showing this off. So get up close to the wall, press the D key in order to uh get get onto the wall. That's that's how it works. That is exactly how it works, boys and girls. There we are. And then jump jump back off in order to get onto solid ground. Yeah, and then you have these uh these crooked these crooked roads. They're just kind of floating in the air. Oh yeah, you have to avoid, uh, the- the spike wheel right here. Don't hit the spikes, otherwise that will destroy you immediately. It will just destroy every single part of your pretty little face. Okay, yeah, this- this section right up here. You're upside down, then you gotta jump. And then actually, where the heck am I even going? It's like- it's like- I- I can't- I barely see the road. Not reflecting any light whatsoever. Okay, then we have to create, like, a little jump right over here. Yeah, there we go. Just use the boost in order to fly all the way to the checkpoint right there. At least we're making a little bit more progress now. Yeah, and then again, we just need to do this, I believe- Wait, did I even do that correctly? Yeah, I think I did. 
We just hit the checkpoint from that. Yeah, so this is a lot of uh, technical excellence. Hang on a second. Oh, wow. Okay, there we go. That's how you cheese it, boys and girls. That's how you say F it to gravity. Oh, yeah, and this is the, the final section of the level right here, actually. We're, we're already at the end. So this is going to involve uh, a lot of boosting right here. A lot of boosting to the very end because it gets it gets a lot steeper as it goes on. Then you're going to really need to start boosting in order to get to the end so that you don't fall off. That was pretty good. That was that was actually pretty okay. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Oh yeah, I definitely beat my time by a lot. It's only 2 minutes and 43 seconds. So yeah, a lot of the hardcore levels just involve you defying gravity, racing upside down, wall riding, performing all sorts of bizarre tricks that completely screw with your brain, and also gravity sometimes not working with you whatsoever, and just being an overall dick to you. That's what most of the hardcore levels uh, consist of. And yeah, that is my my ghost, by the way. The yellow the yellow neon card that was uh, chasing after me, that that was uh, one of my previous replays, if I'm not mistaken. That's all I really have to say about the hardcore levels. There's also the challenge levels too. Minesweeper, I believe I played before. What we do here is oh good god, yeah, we have to we have to fly through all the Mayans. We gotta fly through all of the Mayans, and we just gotta go down to the. Okay, well that just that barely even worked. Oh yeah, and when you die, it just it just restarts. But yeah, the objective here is that you want to fly through all the mines, you have to fly all the way down to uh, the bottom of the track, and just fly into here, just land, and you get into... Yeah, y you get into the, to the finish. It's just a matter of flying through the mines and just, just going down to the finish, and it, it takes absolutely no time at all. By the way, you can still perform tricks even when you're flying, and I think I will show that off uh, very quickly. Okay, we're going to Evil Car Wash, which is the next challenge level, but... If I, can, if I can show this off over here. Yeah, so you can still flip around like this, and it does count towards your, uh, to your, towards your school. Okay, fine. Yeah, we'll try out Evil Car Wash. I have no clue what this, what this even is. Okay, I just hit a bump. I just hit a bump. Y you go away from me, please. You just stay away. Oh god, turn around. Okay, well... At least I got an achievement from that, so I feel like I still accomplished something. Just jump over that. Oh, good god. Okay, well, I just I just flipped around, but that didn't kill me, though. Okay, maybe these things don't actually kill you outright. Well, hang on a second, then. Hang on a moment. Okay, camera, could you, like, please turn back around and just get through here? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, I guess I guess these things do not kill me outright. Okay, I, I thought they did. Maybe, maybe, again, it's just a matter of hitting, in, hitting them, like at an extremely fast speed. Maybe that's what it's all about. I just, like, glitched through everything there. Yeah, I don't know what this replay system's all about, but it's, it appears to be kind of broken. What is warp speed? This is the only other challenge level I'll try here. I don't even know what this is. Okay, this is just like an invisible, invisible level. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, I can barely, I can barely even, even see the damn level here. At least we have Into the Belly of the Beast playing. Oh yeah, we have a little bit of a, a little bit of a remix here. I mean, when you're listening to the what in the world? I couldn't even tell what was happening there because my my orientation was just was just screwed. Okay, yeah, we're not going to bother with that. Yeah, so as I was saying, when you're listening to the music in game, it is slightly remixed because if you listen to the official Nitronic Rush soundtrack, which was also released for free and is downloadable from uh their Bandcamp page, like the Bandcamp page of the uh composer who made most of the music. I believe his name is Torched. He composed most of the music for the game, and he released the Nitronic Rush soundtrack for free. But when you're listening to some of the music in-game, it is slightly remixed, like Into the Belly of the Beast, for instance, has additional chiptune instruments that you don't hear when you're listening to it in the uh, soundtrack, like the Bandcamp version of the soundtrack, so the soundtrack is kind of dynamic in that regard. There's also stunt mode. This is just a mode where you perform stunts and try to get as many points as possible. Not really really the most interesting in my opinion. You also have old levels, which are old unpolished levels and music archived by the developers. I assume these were levels that were originally meant to be in the game, but were left out for one reason or another. You also have community levels. Nitronic Rush did have a pretty large community or a, well, a moderately sized community when it was still relatively new. So you had some people who were creating their own custom levels for the game. I don't know if uh, there's a level editor in this version of Nitronic Rush in particular. It might have been a third-party tool, but I don't know. I think the last track I'm going to show here today is uh, Nitro Tunnel right here. So this is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, the wings are disabled, of course. So this is a pretty interesting level because it's based on the Turbo Tunnel section from uh, Battletoids, 
which uh, is one of the most notoriously difficult sections of like any game in, in existence. This is just uh, a straight up recreation of it. And also this is the only song in the game that is like full on metal. This was the, uh, the one track that I was talking about right here. We're gonna see if we can try and get through it. I mean, there are various checkpoints, whereas in Battletoads there wasn't. Not in this section at the very least. Oh, good god, okay. It's throwing mines at me in, in midair. Wait, do I have- do I have my- my turbo? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so the lava kills you instantly. Okay, yeah, I do- I do have my turbo. I do have my turbo. Okay, jump- jump over that little- little roadblock right over there. Okay, how exactly am I gonna get over this here? Because, I mean, I still have to- I still have to jump over the, uh, the other thing. Oh, wow, okay, never mind. I just- I just did it right there. Hang on a second. I can keep on going. Wait, where am I right now? I don't even know. I don't know where the heck I am. There we are. Very good indeed. Just jump over, hit this jump. Jump over, hit this jump. Good god. Why do I- I, I don't know how to use words today. I, I cannot use words correctly. Yeah, I can just kind of fly like this too. Almost kind of reminds me of Rocket League's controls where you can just kind of- Yeah, you can kind of use your boost in order to fly- What in the world even was that? Okay, hang on a second. I'm saving it, boys. I'm saving it. I ain't giving up- Today! Oh, oh, don't fall in- Okay, never mind. Well, I was trying to save it, but if you- if you could stop careening to the left, I- I might have been able to do it. Okay, well, actually, maybe the- What did I even do there? Not even gravity's cooperating with me today. Okay, maybe- maybe the mines don't actually hurt me. Maybe they're just meant to be, like- like fireworks. They're just- they're just explosions. Yeah, here we go. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, hang on a second. Camera, you need to cooperate with me, please. I'm not even sure if I'm going in the right direction. I, 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 I hope I am. Okay, well, at least I hit a checkpoint, so I'm gonna assume yes. I'm gonna assume yes, drive up, or I'm just gonna bounce off that... What even is physics? What even is physics? I mean, the game already has weird physics simulation anyway, because it just allows me to spin around like a top. Also, I don't know if these little uh, sections hit me, or, or if they uh, kill me. Like the little bits of, of molten Mayans that rain down from the sky after they exploded. I'm just gonna try and, and get through this section right here. Okay, what exactly is this? Do I have to jump on that? Yeah, I assume I had to. Okay, there we go. Very nice indeed. Oh yeah, this section right here. I mean, I remember this from Battletoads. I've never played Battletoads myself, but yeah, I do remember that there are these these like little ships that drop barriers, and you have to you have to avoid them. Oh yeah, and then you have to jump like this right over here. Oh my God. Okay, maybe maybe there's there's a way I can get through this. Just go around that. Go around that, please, and thank you. Oh yeah, and I just realized I have no overheat meter either, so I can just keep on doing this as much as I want. Hang on. I can I can go all the way back. I can go all the way back. Wait, move over it. Damn it. It's almost exactly like the boosting mechanics from Rocket League, even though this predates Rocket League by like four years. Oh boy. Please. Okay, well, I, I was almost able to do that. God, just speak. Say what you want to say. My goodness. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe, maybe don't spam this too much. Hang on a second. There. Didn't even need to jump right there. Very nice indeed. Oh god, I can't control myself right now. How does how does a vehicle even even bounce like that and then just flip like nine thousand times, turn into a literal neutron star when I when I hit the section of, of a jump like that? I don't I don't believe that's how it would work in real life. I'm sorry. I mean I, I I'm not I'm not saying that the developers don't know how physics works, except that's exactly what I'm saying. Because, I mean, I can spin around like a top, for goodness sakes. Or whatever. Whatever. I'm just gonna keep on going. Oh god, there's a lot of explosions. I don't know what's happening at this point. Okay, we got saw blades. We got the blue saw blades. They're just, like, really slow. And not threatening in the slightest. Okay, there's multiple jumps now. Without any boosts whatsoever. Or without any ramps. Except for the, the one right here. Oh god, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't- I- that's not what I need at all, either. I don't need you to be doing just random flips without my consent car. This is not what I need right now. I didn't even jump there. I pressed the spacebar. It did jack crap. Actually, this music might even be a remix of the Turbo Tunnel theme from Battletoads. I don't know. I have no idea, because I'm not familiar with- with anything about that game. But this level is starting to piss me off now. Again, I didn't jump! I pressed the spacebar! Why is it not doing anything? Okay, that is that is the worst one by far. Could you just could you just stop talking, please? 
Could could you just rip your your vocal cords out of your out of your out of your lungs? Oh my god. Your vocal cords aren't even aren't even located in your lungs. What am I talking about? I'm tired. I just want to go to sleep. Okay, maybe I gotta do this. I just gotta keep on boosting, keep on jumping, and then maybe I can get to the end. Maybe I can get to the end. That guy's gonna try throwing a barrier at me. Okay, yeah, here we are. Here we are. Oh yeah, here's the here's the the bad section. Okay, well, hang on a moment. Oh my god. Well, how would you not have to, like, break just a little bit in order to avoid all this garbage? I don't understand. I don't understand how you wouldn't be able to do that. Oh yeah, I got enough height to just jump over this. Is this the final section, or is there more? Oh god, okay, yeah, hi, how are you doing? Okay, well, they do collide with me, but they don't seem to kill me. That's good. Oh my, I can't even see what's going on. The screen's shaking too damn much. I still made it, though. I still made it. 6 minutes and 52 seconds. I probably could have gotten a way better time on that, but... I did it. I beat the Nitro Tunnel and Nitronic Rush. Even though it wasn't the most difficult, in my opinion. But yeah, you still got a nice little Battletoads reference in there anyway. And, uh, I think this is where I'm gonna leave things for now, guys. That's- that's all I wanted to show in Nitronic Rush today. So that's the story mode, some of the levels in Arcade, including one of the hardcore levels, a few of the challenge levels, and that's- that's pretty much everything I wanted to show, so... Not a whole lot to this game. Like I said, it was just meant to be an experimental little indie game. It was released for free. As with these freeware titles, I never expect too much out of them either. You know, this was just some university project made by a group of students, so... They're meant to be mostly experimental in nature, trying out different concepts for games, and maybe eventually turning them into a fully-fledged product. Kind of like what they're doing with Distance right now, because they're basically taking the premise of Nitronic Rush and applying it to Distance, the whole driving survival kind of game, where you take control of this futuristic vehicle and you gotta avoid various obstacles and hazards, gotta make your way to the finish. Distance has pretty much the exact same concept, it took its concept from Nitronic Rush, but as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Distance is still in development, it still hasn't left early access even after three years, but it is still being updated, like the most recent update for Distance came out in January this year, so so the developers are still obviously working hard on it, and they're still keeping it alive. They haven't abandoned it, at least not yet. So there's a chance that Distance may end up getting somewhere eventually, and when I say it may end up getting somewhere, I mean it may eventually receive a full release. I hope it does, because I wouldn't like to see the devs abandon it. Obviously, that's not what I wish for, unless the game is like bottom-of-the-barrel, poorest quality imaginable. Then in that case, I wouldn't really care if it never leaves early access and, and takes off on its own. But from what I've seen, this Distance appears to be the exact opposite of that. The reviews for the game are very high on Steam. It's not free though, I think Distance costs about either $15 or $20, either one, I don't remember which. But I'll definitely cover it at some point in the future, and show off some of the uh, differences between that game and Nitronic Rush. And in the meantime, if you want to download Nitronic Rush in particular, the link is in the description. I do believe Nitronic Rush's official website is still online, even today. They still haven't taken it down, or at least last time I checked, it was still online. It's been about two years since I last checked, though, so there's a chance they may have shut down the domain by now. I mean, if they're working full-time on distance, then, you know, they're obviously not focusing on Nitronic Rush anymore. They're working on a completely different project, but hopefully it's still online, and if it is, then I'll provide you guys the link to where you can download it and play it for yourself, but don't expect too much out of it, as it is just a small experimental freeware title. There's not a lot of content in it whatsoever, at least not where the story mode is concerned, Arcade does have a bit more content for you to mess around with, like you have various challenge and hardcore levels, if you want a bit more of a challenge, and you also have community levels too. And also, it would probably be best if you played this with a controller, I just played this with a keyboard today because I don't have my Xbox 360 controller with me, that's what they recommend you play this with though, so I would honestly recommend it because the keyboard controls can be kinda confusing at times, or they can be confusing for first time players, I mean, you can get used to them if you just play the game a lot, but it would probably be a lot better if you just plugged in your Xbox 360 gamepad or whatever. Racing games are not really designed to be played with a keyboard, even PC racing games. Anyway, that's all I have to say about Nitronic Rush, guys. Go and download the game, play it for yourself. I can't really say
say support the developers and buy the game because it's free, but, you know, just, just check it out if you want. There's no entry fee that you need to pay or anything. You can just download it and start playing it immediately. Check out one of Refract Studios' older projects. That's what they're known as now, by the way. The developers of Nitronic Rush eventually formed their own indie studio, and they're the studio that are now working on Distance. But if you want to check out one of their older projects, link to Nitronic Rush is in the description as always. And it's only available on PC, so don't bother looking for it on Xbox 360 because you won't find it there. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I'll see you in the next video I make. Later!